And we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh Air Podcast. We're Jake Shields. Fresh Air here, so we're going to have some fun. Let's get into it. back what's up guys welcome to the fresh Red podcast i've been looking forward to this one for a while we got jake shields in the house man legendary ufc fighter um you guys are probably wondering yo where's fresh uh guys fresh the barbados right now handling some stuff at home he'll be back Bumba i think God. tomorrow um but you know the show goes on guys we i did uh as you guys know i did my overwatch stream i went for like eight hours then um i went ahead and did two podcasts um which i will reveal i did a podcast with johnny mitchell guys that's going to be coming out Next week, we pre recorded it. It'll come out next week. Uh, with the Connect, his uh, channel just hit a million subscribers. It was, it was great. We talked about, I did a pod for his channel where we talked about my background in law enforcement. Then I did a pod for our channel where we talked about um, how he rose up in the drug game. Really interesting stuff, guys. That interview will be out. But that's why we were kind of tied up. But we're here with Jake now. Um, so this is like 13, 14 hours plus of, of filming, man. We've had a busy day. But I am happy and I'm excited yeah. for this one. Um, Jake, I know who you are. But the audience might not. Can you please introduce yourself to the people? Yeah, I mean, I guess there's uh, there's a lot of ways I explain myself. But originally, I'm, I'm the most known for fighting. You know, I fought UFC and other show promotions, fought professionally for 20 years, had an amazing career, won five world titles, beat five UFC champs, fought the people that know MMA. I fought like the who's who of MMA, of just the most stacked record ever, a sport that I... Uh, the deeply loved. I uh, I semi retired, you know, three four years ago. Haven't officially retired. I might hop in and do another fight for uh, for if it's the right opponent, someone that you know, a name that interests me and pays well. But uh, for the most part, I'm doing a lot of business stuff. Kind of by accident, kind of got sucked into the political world. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, <laughs> COVID hit and the BLM riots and stit. So I kind of got frustrated. So I kind of started tweeting a little bit, and I managed. Uh, for some reason, my account blew up. I think yeah. just, I think just because I'm. He was th- following th- on X. Yeah, I think because I'm authentic. I think a lot of people are fake as we like to cuss, right? Yeah, yeah. A lot yeah. of people are fake as fuck. You get yeah. like someone sent me a thing recently that I was ranked in like in the top ten political accounts in the world, and I'm just fucking. I could barely write a couple years ago. I was, I'm, an, <laughs> I'm an athlete. Fucking didn't go to school. Didn't do this. It's just I say real shit. These other guys are fake. They're yeah. just like. Like, I shouldn't be in the top 10 political council in the world, but the competitions, these guys, they have teams. They're trying to, they're being paid to say things. They're being paid to, to push certain stuff. It's just fake. And I just, I speak truth that most people agree with. And Absolutely. I'm sure I say a lot of shit people don't agree with too, because my opinions are all over the place. I don't really consider myself uh, right or left, but I get uh, considered people lump me in right wing, even though I have some left wing views too. Yeah. Um, so, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your bringing in your background? Yeah, I mean, originally grew up out in the middle of nowhere, uh, kind of uh, small, small, one of those kind of small fucked up towns. All the rural areas aren't great. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I, ha- I did have really good parents, but my dad went through a really, uh, got ran over when I was young in a, in a bad car crash, so was stuck not being able to work, which was terrible. So ended up, you know, I had parents that loved me, but there were some years where my dad wasn't, wasn't around and in a hospital bed for a couple years and mom got stuck taking care of him so that made me end up you know drifting a little bit with my brother basically taking care of me for a couple of years getting a little trouble so what, uh, what state did you grow up in uh california california okay what, yeah, what part uh near it's, it's called like uh san andreas it's near stockton oh like not the game yeah, yeah it's out in the no, boonies okay but 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 the rough boonies not like the not not those nice because i own some property a few houses out now in the nice part cause yeah. even like even like cities you know you have good areas and bad areas yeah people don't realize it's like that in the country too you got like the trailers of uh, course i was near the indian reservations oh and, those, yeah, those Indian are reservations mother- are terrible. Crazy motherfuckers. People don't know, like Indian reservations, so much crime goes down there. Yeah, cause people see like the movies, you know, the feathers and stuff. But man, that's just oh. rough. People disappearing. Uh, yeah, alcoholics. Al- alcoholics like it's, yeah, yeah, you know, because they get a big stipend, mm-hmm. and a lot of them they don't work. They're just chilling, and they got, don't got nothing to else to do. Drugs. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's all a, that's left. Not, not all. There's obviously amazing. Not Indian all, people, but, yeah. but but as a whole, there's a lot, a lot, lot of, of crimes. Problems. 
I had a friend that was a uh, Bureau of Indian Affairs police, and yeah, they it's, would always yeah, be. Yeah. Most people have no crew. Like, like people know the inner city black neighborhoods are bad. Everyone knows yeah. that, but people don't know the Indian reservations are. They can be terrible just too. As rough. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And it's federal territory, so like they, their own mm-hmm. police departments. A lot of times, they got to bring the FBI and shit. So it's, it's wild. Um, so how'd you get involved with um, with fighting? Yeah, I moved to San Luis Obispo to. Um, I, after high school, I had no plans, but then I, I was a good wrestler. All of a sudden, I decided, oh, I want to wrestle. I want to go to college. So I went to try to go so to So wrestling co- was like your original yeah, like, discipline. And I tried going to college, but then I realized I didn't know you had to have like special classes and stuff to go to some colleges. So I was only able to go to a junior college. So I went down to uh, to Cuesta, and I was wrestling there, and I saw this guy uh, this guy walking around. He had a mopo- mohawk and this uh, jacket that said Kimpo. He was looking all tough. He looked kind of like kind of goofy. So I walk up, start talking to him. I'm like, "Oh, you fighting stuff?" And he's like, "Yeah, you know, I got a gym. What's your name?" Like, "Oh, Chuck Liddell." So I'm like, "Oh shit!" He's, like, oh, he's pretty big. So I asked if I could come spar him because I was I, oh, I thought I was badass. I went on my street fights. I was pretty tough. So so I went in to spar Chuck Liddell and whew, he gave me a whooping. I was not <laughs> expecting that. Yeah. <laughs> not- what year was this? 1999. Holy crap! Yeah, it knocked me out with a with a liver shot, like a duh. It was uh, I, mean, I don't know if everyone hit the liver. It's the most painful thing yeah, ever. Yeah, it's like, like lightning going up your, your fucking side. Body locked up. Yep. Yeah, and the thing is, because Chuck hit me there, so I covered it, thinking he wouldn't hit me there again, and he came and hit me. He punched you or kicked you there? Uh, kick punched me. Oh wow! And then he hit me like three times in the liver. But but that was but then he goes don't ever show your hurt that yeah. lesson stuck with me for the rest of my life never oh. show your hurt you know never show your weakness so gotcha but after that legend as well he was yeah. here in, yeah, in oh, Miami yeah, yeah legend so after that I'm just like wow can I I just I just started like following Chuck around pestering him I would show up at the gym he wasn't training anyone but I would just start copying him yeah and I I probably annoyed the hell out of him for a couple months but I remember eventually after a few months one day he texted me invited me to come to Big Bear with him for a training camp and that's when I go. Oh, he must like semi respect me or like me at least because I won't leave him alone. So, he was my mentor for the first uh, first year. What a mentor! Yeah, it was such an amazing mentor to have. You know, still a great friend of mine, loyal guy, like such a loyal, really good, fucking good cool. In Vegas, he was just yeah. going crazy. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, he was you such a out, nice I guy. Him out there in Vegas. Yeah, and thank you so much for facilitating that. We're genuine, gonna have him on here soon as well. Yeah, such a genuine loyal friend. He's done amazing. We've done a lot of each other, but a perfect example is. You know, I had a, I got a rest I had a rest warrant out for me for some stupid shit. It was got got in the news. Mm-hmm. Chuck went and called an attorney without telling me. Had the attorney get my warrant pulled, just stuff like that. Just such wow. a good such a good loyal friend. I mean, I would obviously do things for him too. That's what friends do. But yeah. he's just a, a, a genuine dude. You know, um, one thing I you all the MMA guys are so fucking cool, man. I, I, I like I really right. that Vegas trip, like really changed my perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not that I always had an enormous amount of respect for fighters yeah. ever since I met the Tate brothers. Um, but, like, going out, meeting you, meeting Rampage, mm-hmm. meeting Chuck, and meeting you guys in real life. I mean, we got Nate Diaz in the house, too. He's in the back right. chilling. chilling. Um, you know, how humble and how cool you guys are. And it's, like, the fact that you guys can beat the shit out of people. Yeah. But you guys are still super cool and chill. Then I meet, like, some of these fucking streamers. And I'm like, <laughs> these guys are morons. And I'm like... Yeah. How do you? How is it you meet these other guys that are super respectful, but they can knock your fucking head off? Then you meet these other guys that have no self-respect. Like, they don't respect you. They don't respect themselves. It's fucking crazy. Probably because we worked so hard to accomplish what we've achieved. And yeah. there, there are some douchebag fighters, too. Oh, of course. All the guys that I heard issue are the cool ones. Like, yeah. You, you had Paige on, didn't you? I think I saw him Yeah, on yeah. It was awesome, so That's man. cool. I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad that worked out. Thank you for setting that up. Here. We're yeah, going to go out to California awesome. and do a pod with him as well for his channel. So Yeah, that guy's a legend. I, yeah. I love Rampage. Rampage so is so fun, cool, so humble. Funny as fuck, too. Hilarious. Yeah, I'll have to go watch that because I saw a clip I'm like oh that's dope uh, rampage went out there yeah yeah so, yeah yeah but just, i think it's because we work so hard to get there so the for the most part most fighters are like really cool and humble and it's the guys that give us bad rep or the guys that are fake fighters that aren't that good and they run around and be like, oh i'm a fighter acting all tough like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. if you notice like all of us look how like mellow and chill we are i mean we're not gonna take any disrespect of course but only an idiot would come and disrespect us yeah you know? no absolutely um so you got it. So you start. So you're you're like one of the pioneers, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot, uh, you know, um, guys like you, Chuck Liddell. The UFC wasn't a thing in 1999. It was there, it just wasn't as big. Okay. In '93, it launched. Uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Um, yeah. So '93, it launched. You're fighting in '99. I I remember it taking off in the early 2000s. Like that's, that's when, I when I started to hear bigger. it on TV, on the news, and everything. Mm-hmm. Like take us through that, like with like the explosion of UFC, because you were there from the beginning. Yeah. So it was. I was. I used to go out and fight in Indian land. I mean, they call it native land now for some reason, but I think the Indians still call it Indian, and that's how I grew up. Like the Indians, I think pretty sure still call them Indian reservations. Yeah. But, but people always get mad at me. It's it's 
Native Americans. Yeah, yeah. I get confused over that. But anyways, it, yeah, we used to go fight in Indian land. It was illegal almost everywhere. It was gnarly. We'd bare knuckle. Um, oh, shit. My very first fight, I was a... See, I had to fight on Indian reservations at first. Yeah, it was banned in California. Literally, my first fight, I was there just watching in the crowd. Someone didn't show up. And they're like, who wants to fight? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, me. And then they picked me. And then I go, oh, fuck. They're in there in the back. Chuck's wrapping my hands. And I'm sitting there about to have a panic attack. But I'm like, well, I can't fucking, I can't puss out in front of Chuck. This guy's yeah, like yeah, my yeah. mentor. And I went out there and just beat the shit out of guy. And then I was addicted. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, man. Yeah, it was nuts from just being in the crowd. Another thing, you're like, you're wrapping up and then you're walking out and you're like, what did I just agree to? Holy crap. So this is in the 90s now at this point, right? This was like 99, I think. Yeah, okay. Early, early. Wow. How old are you now at that, at that point in 99? 19, I think. 19. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you, um, so when does like Dana come in and, because he wasn't there from the beginning, right? If I wasn't, if I'm not no, mistaken. No, he wasn't running He it. comes Someone in later on. The Fertitta brothers bought it and they put Dana in charge. Okay. So that was early 2000s, maybe 2001, two, yeah. around there somewhere. And then it just exploded from there. Yeah, man. it just really took a while still. I was always surprised because to me it was the only sport I wanted to watch. Yeah. And like, why is no one watching fighting? Why yeah. are people watching football and baseball? Yeah. Or and boxing. People watching grown men play with balls instead of fight? Yeah. That's some yeah, weird yeah. ass shit. So I never understood it. And I would tell people what I did and I thought I was a pro wrestler. It was annoying. And it was like, <laughs> And there was no money in the sport. Yeah, but I was so poor. I thought I remember Chuck Liddell got like a fifty thousand dollar payday, and I'm like, oh, you can make money fighting. Yeah, and how broke I was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So when, when did it really like? I remember it taking off when I was in high school, like oh five, oh six, oh seven. Fives and it really took off. Okay, yeah, the Ultimate Fighters that really launched it. They did that reality show, oh, yeah. and then I think I think it was Chuck on the first one. Chuck knocked out Randy, I believe, and that just blew it up. Yeah, and that crossed. Chuck was the first guy to become a superstar in fighting yes i remember that yep. i remember being in high school and seeing him the ice man you know what i mean that was the first person i knew to ever get famous and seeing how cool he stayed was it was like that's how you stay yeah because i remember I hadn't seen him in a while then i see chuck and i was like and he's just like bro you never hit me up anymore and i go wait wait i'm the one treating him different he's not treating me different yeah i'm yeah. treating him different because he's famous yeah and like we went to go we went to go to a Hugh Hefner party, and they're like, well, Chuck can get in, but your friend can't. And Chuck's just like, go fuck yourself. And <laughs> I end up getting in, too, but I'm yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. this guy's, like, so loyal. Yeah, He's, like, yeah, not yeah. just, like, ditching his old friends. Yep. I was a fan. I was a nobody at the time, but Chuck still treated me like we were brothers. I'm like, oh, the fame didn't change him. Yeah. So seeing that goes, like, that's what you're supposed to do when you I, I guess throwing punches to someone, like, really bonds you to them to a different degree, right? It, it, yeah, it keeps you real when you're in there, like your brothers. Like I yeah. said, we're here, you know, in Nate Diaz here, because I came up. After Chuck, I switched over and started training with uh, Caesar Gracie, and that's where I met Nick Diaz, Nate Diaz, Gil Melendez, and we have like we call you know a lot of people call like the Scrap Pack, one of the most amazing, amazing teams of all time. Most yeah. of these gyms, everyone moved to the they moved to these gyms to train there, but we're authentic. We all came up together. Yeah, we were all just a bunch of poor, tough kids in the same place, and we just pushed each other. Like we motivated each other so much, we would come in and just every day we would just grind. And we, even though we were, like, good friends, we'd beat the shit out of each other when we were training. <laughs> we'd beat the shit out of each other so many times. Black eyes, bloody noses, but they're, like, my best friends. Yeah. You, you and Nick are really close. Um, yeah, me, He's Nick, here right Nate, now. He's in the Nick, back Nate, telling Nate, guys. Gilbert. Yeah, yeah. Um, how'd you guys meet? Through, well, when I first got there, there was, I wasn't, there was some other guys better than me, but I was probably, me and Nick were the two best up and comers there so we'd be stuck sparring together all the time and we would just go at it so we're what's like, that like like with because he, he's jiu-jitsu if i'm not mistaken and you're wrestling he we we, we all we, we both do it all okay he's striker boxer jiu-jitsu so course, it's just there's so many ways we mix it up we've had so me and nick have had so many wars of course the thing is <laughs> let's let's give an example let's say one day i come in though let's say i have a bad day and nick just beats the shit out of me yeah I'm gonna come. I'm gonna think about it all day, and I'm yeah. gonna come back and beat the shit out of him. And the next day, <laughs> he's gonna think about it all day and come beat the shit out of me. So we've given each other so many ass whippings. Yeah. And then that's what I brought in Gil Melendez, and then that's when Nick started bringing this thing in Nate, and they would we, they would go at it, and me and Nick would go at it every day. Yeah. We would all obviously cross over too, but it was like we were also competitive with each other. But it's a good competition. Of we, course. We drive each other to get better. Iron sharpens iron, right? Because I can't let these guys. Even though I love these guys, you can't let them start beating you up. So yeah. we just drive each other to be better and better and better. No, that's fucking awesome, man. Um, so, uh, well, actually, you know, and I and I gotta, you know, I gotta thank Sneeko for uh, making this mm -hmm. introduction uh, because I saw you on Twitter. and I was like, wow, I agree with what yeah. this guy's saying. He's keeping it fucking real. Um, and you know, Sneeko obviously put me yeah. in touch with you. Um, so I'm in Vegas there with you, right? We're there yeah. for the Super Bowl thing. 
How the hell did the Sean Strickland thing with Sneeko happen, man? <laughs> Take us through that, because you were actually there. Everyone is talking all this crap and saying all this stuff. You were actually there. You actually yeah. introduced Sneeko to Sean Strickland. You made that happen. You're the guy that made See, that happen. See, everyone trying to blame me from that. See, I didn't make that happen. I uh, I was bringing Sneeko in to train with... Well, you uh, warned him. I, I I was bringing him to train with uh, this guy, Javed Basharat, because he's a Muslim. Sneeko's a Muslim. So oh. I'm like, oh, it'll be great marketing for okay. one of my fighters, a really good fighter I have. Yeah. And then Sneeko asked Sean. Because hey, you, still, you still train a bunch of people and coach people yeah, yeah, to this really day. Yeah. So Sneeko goes, hey, Sean, will you podcast for me, with me? And Sean goes, no, but I'll spar you. And Sneeko goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. And then I show up, Sneeko goes, oh, I'm sparring Sean. And I go, no, 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 you're not sparring Sean, <laughs> Sneeko. And, and then he's like, no, no, I... I already agreed to it. So oh, I'm like, so I go, fuck! All right. You so gotta, he you, agreed to it before you got there. Yeah. yeah oh, you, that's you my gotta, bad. You got to keep your word. Yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah, you yeah. Know? So I'm like, well, fuck. Well, all right. So you yeah. had him set up to to yeah, spar with this they, other guy. They yeah, they weren't even gonna spar. They were gonna train. He was yeah, gonna teach him. He was okay. teaching fighting. I wanted to teach him some stuff. Yeah. And then next thing you know, I show up, up and he's like, oh yeah, he's gonna spar Sean Strickland. Exactly. And I'm like, fuck, bro. Yeah, I guess you agreed to it, but you're gonna get fucked up. Yeah. And and you and it's it's you know. I guess Strickland's defense. You did warn him like he's not gonna go easy on you. He's gonna fight. He's actually yeah. gonna, he's gonna beat you. Uh, no, I, I warned him and Sneeko went in there as a man and he chose to, to Sneeko. That's why doing I, that. people, people try to hate on Sne on Sean. I'm like, well, Sne I warned Sneeko. He chose to go in there. And, and Sean told him beforehand like I'm not gonna go no, easy. No, on Sean you, right? didn't tell him anything. Well, he just, <laughs> he just said. Well, but 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 I let him know that that's how Sean is. He's yeah. tried to hurt him, you know. Yeah. So so if you agree to spar him, that's I think it was a dick move what Sean did. I'm not gonna lie. I think yeah. he was an asshole. I would never do that. Yeah. But it's. It is how Sean is, and you know, you know that's what he's gonna do. So, I've heard that that's just what he does in all of his sparring matches. He, he just fights he, everyone. He goes he hard, goes hard on everybody. He, he doesn't does care that who with you pros are. Too, yeah. He, I'm sorry. He spars like that with pros too. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, and and you guys are cool. You guys have sparred many times Sean, and stuff yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, we spar and stuff. We're cool. Yeah. You know, we um, talked shit a few times, but never like I never felt like we were close to getting in a fight. Maybe like once or twice, but yeah. But, um, for the most part, we get along. No, for sure. Uh, so okay, so I didn't know that. So he had already agreed to it before. Shit. Okay. Yeah, and I was kind of like, you might. That's my bad. I was told you might want to rethink it, but I'm also kind of big on keeping your word. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. kind of like uh, you shouldn't agree to it, but it's hard once you agree to something not to do it. You know. And you had and you had been training Sneeko for a bit at this point. You oh, had a couple sessions with yeah, him. Like two him, sessions. Right? So, so you're there, right? And you're and you're kind of just watching on the outside, and you see that they're about to get in the ring and fight. Like, what's going through your mind when like they're. I, I, mean, I, I knew he was going to take a beat, and I knew there was no other way it was going to go. And I don't know. A lot of people didn't watch the whole thing. It's actually worth going and watching the whole thing because for the first three minutes, uh, uh, Sean just kind of talked shit to him, yeah. punched him a little bit, let Sneeko hit him a little bit, yep. just just being kind of a bully, being warm, going, I'm about to fuck you up. It's about to turn bad. <laughs> and then he unloads on him. But, hey, Sneeko didn't get dropped. Yeah. Sean probably should have gone to the body. But a lot of courage, head, a lot he, of heart. He head hunting. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it actually turned out better for Sneeko, I think, than it Sean because he showed he didn't get knocked down. He didn't bitch and cry about it. He didn't like be like, oh, I got bullied. It's like, you know, he chose to go in there as a man and he took his beating like a man. Yeah. And and, that, and that's, I think that that's good. I think bullying is a good thing. It makes you stronger. It makes you better. Um, you know, I've, I've gotten controversial to oh, you think bullying is good. I think bullying, like, keeps men honest and keeps them from doing dumb shit. I think we need, like... <laughs> I don't want to overdo it, but yeah, we need. I think we need more bullying. People have just gotten so ridiculous, like doing just such embarrassing and dork things. And sometimes you need to get bullied to not do that. Yeah, we say every behavior is acceptable. No, it's not. There's a reason why we bully. There's a reason why people feel shame. Shame is like it's one of thing. the most like, strong human emotions. Because maybe there's a reason why you should feel that shame. Because maybe yeah. you've done something shameful. You know. Absolutely. Um, so, so shout out to Sneeko. Got to give him his flowers for mm -hmm. you know getting in the ring with a pro and like you know. You got beat up, but it doesn't matter. Like, that's hard. You know, most yeah. people wouldn't do that. A lot of people that talk shit about Sneeko about that, they would never yeah, step tell, in with tell the pro. those guys to go and spar Sean Exactly. Around. They would never most fucking do it. Hop there you know, they want to sit there and fucking Monday morning quarterback on YouTube mm -hmm. and talk shit, but it's like you would never get in the ring with them. Exactly. You fucking no, pussy. I think it learns a lot, though. I think... I've been a big advocate for saying for high school, they should make every year of high school. You have to, every kid's mandatory does a fight, maybe in front of the PE class, maybe in front of the whole school, even just the training for it. And not just the training, the pressure, the pressure of walking yeah, in a fight yeah. in front of people, the stress of it, the embarrassment of it. It's it's imagine walking in a cage in front of your entire school, knowing you got to fight another man yep. and match you up someone in your fight. It's not just getting hurt. It's embarrassing. Yeah. You might get the shit beat out of you in front yep. of like, a, we, we fight in front of millions of yeah. people sometimes. Millions. It's crazy. Like imagine the stress of that we deal with. Absolutely. Um, speaking of fighting in front of millions of people, recently there's been a, a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and, uh, and fighting going on. Uh, what do you think about the Francis fight with... Um, I was out here traveling, match. so I didn't watch it. I saw he got knocked out, which yeah. sucks. But I mean, he's, he's fighting 
I think Francis is one of the hardest punchers in the world, but he doesn't have the same years of experience of these boxers. So yeah. it's kind of it's one of those things going to happen. I think it's amazing how well he did in the Fury. I saw the Fury fight. That was impressive. So yeah. I, I didn't see this one, so I can't have too many comments. I did see the knockout, though. Mm -hmm. But he's fighting a great fighter, heavyweights. There's a lot of knockouts at heavyweights. I think he should... I think he should at least do one or two more heavyweight fights, considering how well he did in the first one. Yeah, and um, uh, his opponent. Uh, oh, God damn it, the name is escaping me. Is right it now. Um, Joshua or what yeah? Uh, someone in the chat's gonna. Uh, some so, uh, sorry guys. I don't I've follow boxing that chat. close to the thing. Um, you know, it, he he was very like um, very professional about it, um, and uh, you know he was like, hey, you know, hey, just stay, you know, get up, fight again. Yeah, Anthony Joshua. Yeah, Anthony the, Joshua. Yeah. Thank you, Chad. I'm sorry, it's escaped me. I've had a long day. Of, of filming um but yeah he was they were super professional about it they they you know hugged it out after they were cool and that's the way it should be man super professional none of this you don't need to sit there and do all this promo and fuck you and your mom and all this extra shit you can have a fantastic fight with guys that respect each other for the most part even if you don't like someone you fight them you usually respect them after it's kind of yeah. weird like i don't know if you got fights when you're younger but usually you fight yeah. in high school elementary school and a lot of times you're cool after it's yeah. that's how men uh men solve things it yeah. sucks so many people are like, shooting each other and stabbing them before because we used to just go out there and fight and get it out and you gain respect that way yep and you end up becoming friends with those people yeah, yeah exactly a lot yeah, of people i've gotten fights with young became good friends after yeah and fighting in the gym it builds that same bond ship my Absolutely. like all my best friends are from you know, all the training. You're in there beating the hell out of each other in the ring. It makes you like, oh, I respect that guy. Absolutely. Um, here, I'll read some of these chats real quick. Guys, if you got questions for Jake, go ahead and get them in, man. you got literally a multiple-time championship fighter in the house. Um, good friend of mine as well. We're just shooting the shit. Honestly, we're just turning yeah, the camera we on. So you guys, these are you. conversations we that we've had rate, before. So. so you guys just listening to us ch chat it up. Uh, Jake, what's the hardest one or two fights you've ever had in your whole career? What made them so hard? What did you learn from them? See, I've had one of the most stacked, like, some guys have padded records, especially in boxing. That's why it's not as popular. But I've right away I started fighting like the best dudes. So I have so many, but a couple I can throw out is GSP. Everyone knows that guy is like one of the best to ever do it. Dan Henderson was a hard one because mm -hmm. um he floored me twice in the first round and I was able to come back after almost getting knocked out and win. Nice. I'm like literally I was literally seeing two Dan Hendersons. Yeah, I was I was gonna say, What was that? Yeah, like? But I was prepared to die that night, you know. Yeah. So I was just like keep fighting, keep fighting, even though I was about out, I was able to come back. It felt good to get dropped that hard and then come back and dominate, you know? Wow. So, yeah, I've been, I've been in a lot of hard fights, though. I believe My it. first fight at the UFC was tough, not because I think I was a lot better than the guy, Martin Campman, but I cut, uh, I'd been fighting 85s and I had to cut, like, 30 pounds in, in like, a week. And I just felt so fatigued. So, like, oh, two shit. minutes in, I was totally gassed, but I was able to still push through that through the, through the pain and still win the fight. Oh, wow, man. Talk about building character. Um uh, Hey, man, Ramadan Kareem, I have two questions. One, are you fast this year? I understand you're not really into religion uh, like that. I'm just interested in number two. Would you say I shall? I should still go hard in the gym the same way I uh, down it? I, I down? It isn't Ramadan concerning that I don't have water to quench my thirst at the gym. Um, try to go when after you break your fast, bro. That would be the best way to do it. That's that's what I would say. Yeah, I know the people who do Ramadan, they usually go in the evening and yeah, train. Yeah, you know, try to go in the evening. Especially if you're actually doing the water part. Or early morning. If you're not drinking the water and then training, it's brutal. Yeah, so it's done, tough. I've, I've done, <clears throat> not Muslim, but I've told the friends a few times, I'm like, oh, I'll do Ramadan with you for a couple of days, and it's the water part's hard. Oh, yeah, that's man. the hard, yeah. That it takes kills a, people. It, it, it's not easy. A lot of these guys don't realize, like, if you're actually following it, it's tough. Yeah. Um, question for Jake. You remember back in 2010 after you defeated Dan Henderson in Nashville during your speech after the match, Mayhem Miller came and interrupted your speech saying, where's my rematch, buddy? What the hell happened? I thought you guys were cool with each other. That shit went downhill after Nick and Nate intervened. Love the Diaz brothers, though. He was mad I fucked his bitch. <laughs> God damn. Okay, fair enough. That, um, Anubi says, shout out to the one and only Jake Shields. Uh, that new RNC is legit. Okay. Um, I've been in kind of a new badass joke, so... <laughs> Uh, Jerome says, Jake, I wasn't familiar with your game, but after discovering you on Twitter, I am now a fan. Also, I agree, BJJ is rarely practical for a street fight, but can you please show Myron that it works, WFNF? Um, yeah, it's, it's, you have to modify it for the street fights. It can be very effective in the street fight, but don't pull your ass guard. That's why it gets a bad rep. These dumb motherfuckers trying to sit guard in a street fight, then no, it is not effective. But there's very uh, highly effective chokes on your feet you can do. Uh, so street fighting and cage fighting are totally different. People need to realize that. Okay. They're, they're two arts, and I have a, unfortunately, I have a lot of experience with both. I didn't, I grew up fighting way, way too much. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, 
Dev Joe, PJ, Jake, big fan brother, uh, Renzo, Gracie, Brown, about myself. What are your thoughts on the Dilt, on Dylan Dennis? Hope to meet you and train one day, brother. Bless up. Dylan Dennis is a fucking clown. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I, I met him early on and I went and trained with him. He was a, such a nice, respectful kid, all cool. And then he just changed. I think he started hanging out with Connor and uh, tried trying to act like Connor being a I think deep down he's not a bad person. I think there's a good kid. He's kind of act like that for the cameras, or is he really yeah, like that? He's just trying too hard, but it's like nonstop. I don't know. Gotcha. He had that funny moment where he clowned on uh, Logan. That shit was fucking funny. But yeah, I yeah, think yeah. he like has people do shit for him because I've had multiple uh, arguments on him on Twitter. I just clown him. But there was one. Th- I can't remember what. But there was one thing we did something really clever, but it almost felt like it was someone else doing it. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah it was yeah. like he photoshopped some some like DM that I allegedly said that was hella funny. I'm like, okay, this guy actually did something good. I'm like, it ain't even him, though, because everything else is just so dumb. So I feel yeah, like he yeah. probably had someone help him with that Logan Paul shit. Yeah, I think so, too, because those, those, those pictures talking. and memes, like, that shit talking was on another level. And his shit is usually so bad. The thing, Logan Paul is so, I mean, uh, Dylan Allen is usually so unwitty and clever, but the, the few times something will come and just look way too too clever yeah for i think he had someone so help I think him he because someone sometimes when you do when he did the face off with logan like he was stuttering and shit so like i i don't think comedy and wittiness is no, his thing i think he had someone help him with that yeah, that, he definitely that had someone help him. i started feeling bad for logan at that point it's yeah like, oh, when they're roasting his chick you just gotta leave her at that point oh, man. man that was bad that was that really was bad. bad i mean it's bad now because dylan dennis whenever he posts people just make fun of him and tell him stop posting you lost to logan paul mm-hmm. but um but he really won that. Yeah, what was that Dylan? I think Logan Paul won that. Lost that. Oh uh, yeah, well yeah. I mean, his girl made him look terrible. <laughs> what, what, what's your What's your thoughts on this situation? Is just as far as like, <sighs> I mean, it's tricky because she was a model. A lot of it, she's probably out just doing photos. But it looked like she hooked up with a lot of those guys. Yeah. And another problem I have yeah. with it, it wasn't she's hooking up with a lot of guys. It's uh, she said ho shit too. A fame chaser and ho shit and a fame chaser. You know, as guys that are semi famous, we get we don't want these fame chasing hoes. Yeah, you get it. Dude, it's bad I don't, when girls are coming up to me like, oh, I know this famous guy. Oh, I hate when girls guy. do that. It's the, they think it's like trying to turn us on. It's the biggest fucking turn off. That means okay, you fuck that guy. Yeah, fuck that guy. Yep. Cause, yeah, That's all like, guys we're here. Not, we're not stupid. Oh, we're, I know this guy. Oh, he's my friend. Oh, we know, we know what that means. <laughs> friends with him. Friends with him. You fucked him. You fucked him. Like I, I can't stand fame chasing hoes. Yeah, I'm not even the biggest fucking hater and girls that like to fuck I, when I was younger and fucked around I fucked a ton of girls how am I going to hate on them yeah, I, yeah. I don't want to marry those girls of but course like, not but I'm not speaking of transitioning to, to 304s um, you're very well versed you know in, in the game mm-hmm. um, you know you definitely know your way around dating dynamics mm-hmm. and everything else like that um, oh, I, 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 I think this is something that people need to see that side of people were kind of surprised when you yeah. came on and we did that podcast in Vegas yeah. and you were on and you were just spinning a bunch of game um what are your thoughts on dating nowadays, modern uh, modern women, how guys should move about? I mean, I'll just leave it open yeah, to you. Think, what are your thoughts uh, in general? Feminism, all that. I mean, everyone has to date how they want, but typically I think for a man, you should probably uh, probably date three or four girls at once until you start really feeling for one. And it's like, how dare you, Jake? You, you can't really you? like trust. The trad cons are going to come after <laughs> us, man. I, I, I think you have to date a lot to start <laughs> figuring out how to read girls, like when they're lying. Because you can't just like ask a girl, how many guys you had sex with? They're not going to like tell you that. You yeah. start looking for like uh, tell certain behaviors girls do, certain ways they act. Are all their friends sluts? Is she being, sh- if, if things aren't matching, she says, you, you, you start you start learning to read it. So I think it's generally smart to to just date multiple girls till you really start having feeling for ones and then, then maybe maybe switch to one. Yeah, and then filter from there because then you'll know what to look for, you right? De- so. you definitely, these guys that try jumping right away, head over hills for a girl, that they get taken for a ride. Yeah. Because she's probably, it, well, look at this way. She might be dating multiple dudes at once and if you're not, you're the sucker. Yeah. Worst case, it's better for her to be the sucker than you. Yeah, absolutely. So And plus, girls are a lot more likely to put, a, put up with it. They're more likely to... If they know you're with Brooklyn girls, they're gonna fight harder to get you. If they know you have no other options, they're gonna treat you like shit. They're gonna fucking walk all over you, use you. They know they they know they can ignore you. They know they can go out and be like, oh, this guy's my friend. I'm just out with him. But if they know you have four other girls that are trying to convince you to be a girlfriend, they know they gotta be in their best behavior. They yeah. know they gotta do little things. They know they gotta respect you. But yeah, let me ask you this: um, What like put you on to like the ugly side? Um, a female nature and realizing that girls aren't sugar and spice everything nice. Was it be- when you became a professional fighter? Was it prior to that? Did you have a bad breakup? Like what? What I, put you on? Is what really hit it for me. I mean, I was young. I didn't do that good with girls, and I kind of started figuring it out. Thankfully, before I had any fame, I started doing well. But then I got a little fame, and and I was also good at talking to girls. And I, you're like, wow, you see, uh, 
you realize how fucking shady they are. Yeah. <laughs> like, just, like, just out of control. Like, basically, you got to a point where it didn't matter. I could sleep with any girl I tried fairly easy. And I would have, you know, I had a party place for a minute. And the worse my rep got, the easier it got. Girls mm. would just start hearing, oh, this guy's sleeping with other girls, and it would make them want to sleep with me. Yep. That's when you, and then another thing, you realize they don't care if they have boyfriends. Yeah. Sometimes I'd, I wasn't, I didn't used to ask. Sometimes I'd find out afterwards a girl would have a boyfriend. And, and here's something that really was a wake-up call to me. I'd go, oh, why did you cheat? Always the answer was some version of he's too nice, he does what I tell him. And girls even admit to testing him. They'd be like, I tell my girl, to, my boyfriend to do ridiculous things, and he does it. He's like, and you're, and you're so like masculine. I just wanted to come fuck you and feel like a real man. I had another girl tell me that her man like broke down crying. And then she like, you know, or apparently they got robbed or something. And then afterwards, you know, she was a little shook up. And then she's like, your man starts crying. Oh. And she's just like, I was just so disgusted. I hadn't had sex with him since. And that's why I'm coming to sleep with you. Just shit like that you hear. Like, I fucking told you guys. Don't, don't the, I didn't, we didn't coordinate before this. Yeah, like, I like I be telling people all the time, they look at me crazy, Byron, you, what do you mean don't show emotion? What do you mean don't cry in front of your girl, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, dude, like... No, yeah, girls will tell you, oh, I don't mind, they're full of shit. Also, don't ever listen to a girl for dating advice. Yeah. They're full of shit. Because, okay, think about this. If you ask a girl for dating advice, she she's going to tell you what she wants the guy. She, she well, If she's in love with you, she's gonna be like, oh, I want this guy to buy me flowers and do this and that. Not what that guy's actually doing. He's actually ignoring her, fucking four other girls. Yeah. She's going to say what in her head she wishes she, she would yeah. do. They're, 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 Isn't it amazing how counterproductive, like, what women say they want is to actually what they want. be attracting, yeah. them, attracting them? Like, yeah. it's crazy. And they might want that in their head, but it's not the guys they're attracted to who aren't doing that. Yeah. Versus, like, if a guy tells you, yeah, I like girls that do X, Y, Z. Yeah. They're, 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 you're you're going to get the guy if you follow that shit. But yeah. if you follow a girl's advice. Oh, yeah, you're going to get no pussy. It's a fucking L, man. But I would say if you have a parent dies or something, you could cry one time. But but yeah. you can't just. Your, your job as a man is to be the rock and be stable and hold a girl down. And if you're having a breakdown, it just disgusts girls. It's the biggest. And they'll just get, like, so turned off and disgusted by you that they won't, like, uh, won't respect you. You guys need to realize that. So. Let me ask you this, because you're a little bit um, older, so you can speak to this. How would you say, like, dating has changed from before, right, 90s, 2000s, yeah. pre-social media, to now? Uh, it's probably just easier with all the social media, because before you had to go up and approach girls. Yeah. Apparently, guys don't walk up and talk to random girls anymore. No. If you have a lot balls, of guys don't like doing that shit. If you have balls dude. and do it, girls love that. Yeah, girls yeah, yeah. love men coming up and talking to the person. They, yeah. they like that way. But if I mean, you're not weird you, about you it, you might get shot down sometimes and be weird about it. Of course. But, they, but if you're not weird, girls absolutely love dudes coming up person to talk to them because there's because they're like, oh, men never do this anymore. Apparently. Yeah. But yeah, the, I never use the apps or anything. That's, I haven't used the tenders and the things, so I can't really comment that. But apparently, dudes are just on there like swiping and I don't know it's it's a different what girls say they want and what they want is different they'll be like I want to do six five this and that but if you have fucking charisma or you're funny yeah you can get around shit that. don't matter yeah like that's why it's funny what they're putting they want what they want is not the same thing of course girls might think they want that but if simply with dude if you have charisma you could I know short ass dudes with no fucking money that are always with hot chicks yeah so dude, dudes can pull it off you could do it yeah yeah I mean of course it's good to have I think okay Money is something been way over exaggerated too. Yes, it's good to have money, Absolutely. but it's not the only thing girls look for. Yeah, girls, and if it's the only thing you have, no, it's not the it's only be thing. Bad. Girls, yeah, guys, it's think really it's, bad if it's the only thing we got. Yeah, so many guys think that's like the only thing. No, it's not the only thing girls want. They want a man. It's, yeah. it's way, it's way over. Of course, you want to make money, but it's not. It's not the only thing they want by any means. So, back to the fighting stuff. I gotta ask you this, Ryan Garcia, X breakdown. What do you? What are your thoughts on that? See, going I don't, crazy talking about the Bohemian Grove, doing things with, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know well, thoughts? but to me it looks like he's having a manic episode. You know, okay. I've seen people that have had manic episodes before, and it looks like he's kind of slipping into a manic episode. I mean, who knows if there's truth to some of this crazy shit he's saying, mm -hmm. but to me it looks like he needs to to get some sleep. <laughs> Usually your guys are having a mania to get a couple, uh, good night's sleep. Has anything they, happened since then? Like, did he come back and like retract some of that stuff? Yeah, maybe, he, maybe he's finally got some sleep. Chat, let me, let me know what, you, what, what, what happened um, because I'd be interested to see uh, whatever. And, and it's interesting. We already got 6,000 plus people on Rumble. And three, three, people, they know we're going to transition to Rumble to cover some other stuff. They already know. It's hilarious. Um, what else? Um, oh, yeah, go ahead, Mo. Go ahead, go ahead. We're going to make a quick little fix right here. Um, so what else was I going to say? Um, Jake Paul fight, Mike Tyson, crazy. Yeah. I saw this uh, trailer 
on Instagram, and the fight's gonna be on Netflix, which I don't think I don't think I've ever seen a, a fight like that not be on pay per view. What are your thoughts on it? Tyson make the right decision here. I mean, he's getting paid, so yeah. I guess. But he's nice. Like, give me fifty eight when he fights. Tyson's a legend, but he's been out of his prime for like thirty years. He yeah. was just an absolute killer in his early twenties, but then he already faded out before that, and now he's fighting. I don't know. I don't think he's doing the fight. Jake Paul's in his prime. He's much younger. It's just uh, 31 year age difference. Yeah. I don't like it, but I'm still going to watch it. So yeah. what are you going to say? Yeah. I, I Honestly, I'm, I'm shocked that Tyson took it because mm-hmm. Jake's been trying to, he's been egging Tyson on for years. Yeah. So um, I'm actually shocked that he took the fight. I mean, part of me is like, okay, I'm going to definitely watch this because obviously yeah, Mike Tyson like, uh, is, is a fucking legend. Mm-hmm. You can't take that away from him. But another part of me is like, why, Mike? Why? Man? Yeah, he's because you don't want a fucking YouTuber. Like the thing, you the, the, yeah, yeah the, the the thing in the back of my my mind that bothers me is like, I don't want a fucking YouTuber to knock out this legend, bro, because he's fucking thirty plus years older. Like, come on, man, it's just so like Jake would never, he wouldn't last tw- ten seconds against Iron Mike mm-hmm. in in the in the nineties. Yeah. Never. And, yeah, and even though I'm not like obviously don't love Paul, he is a good boxer. He's a yeah, good yeah, athlete. Yeah. He trains really yeah. hard. He's hired like the best trainers. He's right in his prime. I just. Don't People see. can't take that away. People try to sit there and say Jake's not a good boxer. He's a fucking fantastic boxer. No, he boxer. can box, but he, he can but definitely box. But still, fighting the guy like this is gonna be the fifty-seven. Yeah, it's like, that's come crazy. on, his cardio. Tyson's not gonna have the speed because he was not. so quick. He was boom, boom, boom. His like yep. pile, and he's not gonna be able to hold the conditioning. Yep. I mean, who knows? He could get like a quick knockout, but I just think he's not gonna have the power either. Yep. So it's just not gonna. It's not fair fighting someone that much older. Not at all. If he man. was like forty-eight, I would say okay, Tyson will probably still fuck him up. But fifty-eight's just too probably uh, sixty, too much. bro. Senior he's citizen, almost, he's almost sixty, yeah. And and I've seen clips of him walking with a cane. Damn. You know, like like obviously he doesn't publicize that shit, but there's been many videos of um mm-hmm. like fans and shit like that v- t- taking video, and he walks with a cane, man. Yeah, I mean he's nearing sixty. Yeah. He's, he's probably got a lot of abuse on his body for of all course. he was fighting. It's uh, Customato beat him up, man. Like his old trainer, yeah, Coast, like Costa was, was, was going but, crazy, yeah. man. And, and, that, and that's when he was sharp. When Costamato, once Costamato died, he started slowly slipping because yep. that guy was he was on. He didn't him. have he a good team in. around him. Mm-hmm. I, I genuinely think if if uh, Cus didn't die and he didn't. Um, God damn it! Who was his trainer that, that worked under Cus um, after Custer? God, I know. I, I mean, I just hung out with this guy, so I should know. He, I, he I really, was on the Lex Friedman podcast. Yeah, this I guy. Out, I hung out with that guy recently. He was so cool. I wish I could remember his name because he invited me to his house. I feel so bad. I can't. If you watch the day, old but... Mike Tyson training videos, he's the one holding the mitts, yep. saying there, boy, trying to not get knocked mm-hmm. the fuck out by Mike while he's you know bobbing and weaving and shit like that and doing the the whole peekaboo method. But um. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up real quick. Or someone in the chat's so, gonna put it. Put it. I just hung out with this guy. Is why it's driving me crazy. Cause like. Uh... Oh, Bobby, what is it? Bo- Tony Atlas. There yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah, Teddy Atlas. Teddy Atlas. Teddy I'm sorry. Atlas, yeah. Because that dude's a G. I like hung out. I watched fights with him. We were breaking down fights. It was awesome because we, we watched MA fights and he was having me break them down for him. And I'm like, bro, I want to go watch boxing fights. Have you break down for him? And he gave me his number. He's like, oh, come to my house. And nice. So I'm like, I'm going to have to do that when I'm in New York. Awesome, dude. Such such a cool, like, uh, yeah. such a cool dude. But yeah, once Mike got rid of those guys and he started having these, you know, the Don Kings and these party people and he was doing cocaine benders in mm-hmm. Japan and shit like that. That's when it all started going down, man. It was crazy. Is he would never got that rape charge well, either if it af- was, if he if he had those guys around. Also, though. even after he stopped training with those guys, he still went years with. He was so so much head everyone. He still went years beating everyone up yeah. until he started falling off. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, could you imagine if he didn't have that distraction? Yeah, if Cus hadn't died, he, knows he didn't how. go to he, jail. He would have gone forever just yeah. tearing people up. Yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. Like he would probably, man, he could have easily done a, a Floyd Mayweather like forty and zero type shit. Yeah, I agree. You know, easily. Um, any other uh, other other chats? Um, we got here. Taylor Jackson says, uh, "Jake, I just started training in uh, Bill under Hetio Seneca. What kind of training would you recommend off the mat?" And BJJ, I'm sorry, under. Uh, Helio Seneca, my, I mean, sorry, guys, my mat, I sucks. say just be spend as much time on the mat. Go there and train as possible. If you're trying to do stuff off the mat, go lift weights or run. You can run and lift weights, but just be at the gym as much as possible. It, it, you don't want to be fucking. People try to do these stupid drills at home and shit. Nah, go lift weights instead or Fair run enough. or something. Uh, Machaca goes, W no fresh market, finally cook. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, Jerry BB goes a new subscriber and your follow up after Candace is Jake huge W you're the man Jake Bilal works out at my Orange Theory next time you're in Chicago join him so I can meet you 
I'm out there all the time in friends with Bilal, so I actually need to do that because I'm always I'm always stuck on such tight business when I'm in Chicago. But I think the next time I'm there, I might stay in extra couple of days. You know what? Yeah, um, we should, we should go there together, bro. Because um, I, I owe Money Burg an interview. Yeah, let's, so, so we can. I'm we not can going a couple weeks. You're gonna oh, okay. We'll I gotta look the I'll look the exact dates. We'll coordinate because I because yeah. I shout out to Derek yeah. Money Burg. I owe him an interview. Okay, that, that'd so, be awesome. And, I, yeah. and I've told him I'm gonna go to Chicago, so I need to go out there. I'm gonna freeze my balls off. Come out there, yeah. Derek's place is sick. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Sick, bro. You gotta like. Yeah, people could talk you, all yeah, the shit they want about him, but Derek is a oh, fucking yeah, nice yeah, guy. Man. On him, bro. They think he's like, I get it, a lot of wealth guys are grifters, but yeah. this motherfucker's got some money. Nah, yeah, he put his money in the right stuff. Guy, smart yeah, guy, guy sharp guy. Uh, people think, don't like his his delivery sometimes. Like, oh, he's so condescending, but he just generally bro, wants guys to win. Yeah, like, make fucking about, yeah, money, he, become he wants successful. You to make money. Yeah, he, he he's a little harsh on broke people, but yeah, I've made a lot of money off taking some of his investment. Fight, you know, I invest a lot of the same company he does. And yeah, I've I've done very well recently. So yeah, shout out to Money Burke, man. People can say whatever they want, but I like the guy a lot. No, he's a good guy. He's super loyal. People yeah. that are good to him too. Oh yeah, he's a, a, people have tried to come at you, and he's no, like, fuck you guys. People talk shit to him. Yeah. you know, because someone's talking shit to him. Like, fuck you, bro. Don't talk to my friend like that. Yeah. No, nah, Moneyberg is good people. Um, but yeah, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, oh, caught up on the chats. Okay. Um, yeah, but yeah, the Jake Paul thing. I, I mean, I, I, I'm really, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I'm gonna obviously tune in. Yeah, but I, I'll I, watch for sure. Yeah, definitely. I think the whole world's gonna be watching. And that's interesting that they have it on Netflix. Like, yeah, how they must be paying a lot of money for that. Like, how is that a first to stream the yeah. fight like that on Netflix? Yeah, a lot of people watch because of that, but they must be paying a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, Netflix got to be. Yeah, they got to be. I wonder what the, how much because they didn't that release million, details, a lot, right? A lot of millions for sure. I don't know. They didn't release details no. on that. Shit. Um, let's see. Oh, Hot Swins. Oh, you yeah, were yeah. recently on their podcast. Yeah, I just did. They the copied me because they knew I was bringing you on. Right. God damn it. Because uh, I've been, uh, I've been that, saying for a while. <laughs> yeah, they got, they beat me to the punch. Um, what was that like, bro? Me and them. How's that? Uh, where, where did they film at? Yeah, they, it was uh, cool because they're guys. Like, Are they uh, in Nevada? Nevada, yeah, they're out there. Oh, they're guys of uh, when I first started politics. Vegas. Yeah, Vegas, yeah. They're in, they, they actually are there? They've been there for a few years, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. When I first started uh, following politics, they were some of the first guys I watched because there's not doors. Did they move I, from California? Uh, I don't know, actually. Dude, everyone, Ve dude, I'm telling you, Miami and Vegas are the next cities, man. Mm -hmm. They're it's the next up. cities, dude. I'm telling you. Uh, but sorry, you're saying. Yeah, the Hot Twins are super cool, like I said, because some of these conservatives guys are dorks. I can't relate to guys like Ben Shapiro and stuff, but they're like guys that are like normal guys. So yeah, it was fun. Yeah. And they're, uh, like, they had such a transformation. Like they went from, because mm -hmm. um, I remember watching them when it was Twin Muscle Workout. Like yeah, they used yeah. to have a fitness channel and they'd work out and vlog mm -hmm. their shit and they'd talk, you know, say all kinds of yeah. funny shit. Um, and then they switched over, like, because fitness is a dead genre now, bro. Like, no one is makes it, YouTube, yeah, no, like, it, yeah. fitness YouTube channels are kind of dead. So they, they transition, you know, intelligently mm -hmm. so. And um, they, they, consult, they, call, they call themselves the conservative twins and they started, like, talking about politics yeah. more. Um, which is interesting because once you talk about politics, you know, you start to get restricted or whatever. Um, actually, should we make the transition right now? Might as well. All right, and just come on over to Rumble, yeah. rumble.com slash fresh and fit. We're going to start talking about some other stuff. Run to the bathroom quick. Or oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, bro. Go. Um, uh, you, you're right there to the right. Take your time. Um, we're going to go ahead and make the transition. So, yeah, guys, come on over to Rumble, rumble.com slash fresh and fit. Um, other side, other side, Jake. Right there. Um, so, yeah, the, yeah the, throw the link in the chat for the people. Come on over, guys. We'll make the, we're going to make the switch over. Um, hope you guys are enjoying the interview so far. Sorry, guys. Like I said, I know you guys were wondering, yo, why aren't we having an after hours or whatever? So here's my day, guys. So I did Fed Reacts, right? Yesterday. Right? <laughs> after I did Fed Reacts, we went for about two hours. Then I went to the gym, okay? When I got some food. Then I came back and I streamed. I ended up, I ended up playing with uh, Overwatch Pro. Shout out to Awkward, right? Um, his name is Awkward. And he's probably like, you know, he's he's very, you know, pro self improvement, whatever. Very like anti woke, unlike the rest of the Overwatch community. They start, you know, they start freaking. Oh my god, you're playing with this toxic YouTuber, right? They're saying that to him when he played with me. So we went on a win streak. All right, we were defeating everybody. We went like twenty six and five, right? I got my diamond rank. We Liddy. I'm diamond now. Let's diamond. fucking go. Give me a diamond, Marco, because I got my side effect boy. Let's go, Yo, baby. The beatings will continue. All right. I was destroying these scrubs.